Hey, this is David with Haggerty at Redline Rebuild Updates. Today, working on our Subaru engine. We have our long block completed, and I need to move on to a fully assembled engine so we can get it on this test stand and get it running. So, order of operation today, get our valve covers on. So all these pieces here are for our valve covers. And then we'll move over here to our intake manifold where we have everything spread out, everything's nice and clean, and it is ready to be assembled. This is a huge puzzle, as you can see, because there's a multitude of parts. And of course, everything has a specific spot to go in an order. So we, we might get it right the first time and we might not, but at the end of the day, it'll be together. So with that, we gotta roll. All right, there's that. Okay, left side valve cover is on. Let's roll this over to the right side. Okay, so before I throw my valve cover on, I wanna wipe down any oil, of course, or any uh, dirt that might have gotten put on here. That's more useful when you're doing it in the car, but for us, we're pretty clean, but you still don't wanna have any oil on the surface, even with a reusable gasket, which these are, like the keep things tidy. All those wrenches in here, isn't it? Press a wrench? Yep. Just to show you how easy it is. And that you can do it without boogering it up. Good enough. All right. Okay, that wraps up our valve covers. Let's roll this back up, right side up, so we can work on the intake manifold. Should be the name of a club. Yes. <laughs> Probably yes. <laughs> right. <clears throat> All right, ready to finish out our puzzle pieces here for the intake manifold? Word. All right, so on the intake side, we're going to start with these, I don't know, glamorous emissions controls. So this is kind of interesting because it is a runner for the air and fuel mixture because you have your injectors here, but then it also has these flappers which are not relative to the throttle body, therefore emissions. So 
as my understanding is, these things basically create a turbulence um, at whatever specified RPM to keep that fuel moving and burning. Seems complex to me. There we go. Okay, now that we have our fuel lines in, that brings me to put my intake manifold on, which also brings me to my rockauto.com tip of the day. So this is a fixed point from here to here. There is no play, right? However, we have these stands that have to, this has to sit on and these need to float because there are multiple parts in here that bring up a stack of dimensions. So I'm sure I'll need these loose. So then as I set this down, I can find all the threads. Like so. Now I can come in and tighten everything down. Of course. Like I said, next point is to torque everything down. Now, when I went through and looked up the torque specs, I learned that these fancy valves are referred to as the tumble generator valve. Their words, not mine. What are they getting torqued to? And these get torqued down to 18 foot-pounds. All right, so moving right along here to our rest of our intake stuff. I have my throttle body I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna have hose in here I'm gonna put on, and I'm moving towards the turbo. Now, as you watch me go through and do this, I'm sure you're gonna see where I make a mistake because I put something on too early, have to take it back off, put it back on, and quite frankly, I'm sorry that's the way I gotta do it because I'm kind of piecing this together and muddling my way through because this is the first time I've ever done this. Now, for those of you that are sitting back on a couch and ready to type away and say, I, I found it, you know what? Cool, good for you. And if you tell me that you've never done this and never had to take something back off to put it back on, well, I don't believe you. Here we roll. Well, you can see here I have our intercooler basically pre-assembled so I can just kind of flop it down here and hook it up to the turbo inlet. All right, so as I said in the beginning of this episode as I was going to do something wrong, right? Wrong order, whatever you, and here's one of them. This intake 
rail or tube, um, well, it had to go in before the top of the intake manifold went on. So unfortunately, I had to lift everything up, slide it up underneath there, and then bolt it in. So for those of you that have already got that message typed out and ready to hit send, it's your choice because you might be a little quick on your trigger. Now, once this is done on the engine stand, like I said, and we have our glamour shot relative to our time lapse stuff, then we're going to move this out here because everybody's asking, God, ah, where's this thing going? Well, I'll tell you, here's where it's going. It's going on this state of the art. Subaru test rig. No, it's not just a plain old Jane eight foot long pallet. This is a Subaru test rig. So it's gonna have this fancy, freshly painted cross member bolted to it. Engine sets on that. We have a not quite so shiny yet exhaust tube that we're gonna run off of there for some gnarly sound, by the way. And then we have our rat's nest worth of Salvage Subaru harness from Old Blue. But we do have a nice gauge pack. In, oh man, it doesn't tell you how many miles run it. Bummer. But seriously, the engine's coming on here. We're going to fire it up on here and, well, hopefully make some music with it. If not, we're going to plug in some music for it. Well, there we have our assembly to this point. Like I said, from here, when they're done with the fancy shots, we're gonna take it out there, put it on our test rig, and fire it up. Glorious. Well, till next time, get out in the shop, go get your work done, find yourself a fun project. <laughs>